I enjoy theater and the performing arts a great deal. Perhaps my favorite play is an American classic, Thornton Wilder's Our Town. The play was written at the beginning of the 20th century and set in a small New England village. The play examines themes like life and meaning, relationships and death. The play closes the final scene depicting the main character, Emily, looking back from the grave from the cemetery on the hillside and her life events and, and things that happened in the town. And she exclaims, Oh, Earth, you're too wonderful for anyone to realize you. I first read that play in the 1970s. And that line, Oh, Earth, you're too wonderful for anyone to realize you, really has stuck with me. It's something I've really ruminated on over the years. It's both very simple yet very profound. We go through our life day to day doing our ordinary routines and, and we seldom realize how wonderful planet Earth actually is, as well as how beautiful people actually are. Today, what I want to talk about is the Earth, the amazing beauty of the Earth and how wonderful it is to appreciate our planet. So take a moment now, subscribe to this channel, as well as click the bell so that you're notified of future videos. I was born in the 1950s and grew up in rural western Pennsylvania. The area that I grew up in was dotted with coal mines, and in the town nearby there were a number of steel mills. I would play a lot outside as a kid, and Behind my parents' home was a, a stream of water where I'd like to play, but I never went in the water. You see, the water was this orangish-brown, unnatural color, and it was that color because of the runoff from the coal mines. There was iron and other elements that had run off and polluted the water so that the rocks and the, and the bed around the stream were all this funny orangish color. Nothing lived in that stream. It was a dead stream. When we'd open our windows in the summer to let in some coolness, what would also come with that was coal dust. And that was really from the trucks driving past our home, filled with coal, and the dust would billow off and end up covering everything in our home. It was very gritty, very dirty. My father would take me into town to see baseball games in town, and, and we would sit in the evening in the bleachers, and I'd look up from the little stadium and see these stacks with flames shooting out of them. That was from the steel mills. These flames were shooting up and with them all kinds of pollution. The area that I lived in was very polluted, and it took me a while to realize that because it's actually a very pretty part of the country. In time, much of that pollution was cleaned up. There was a process of cleaning the waterways and those industries closed, but the closing of those industries left the area that I grew up in in real economic hardship. There are ways that we can do better to clean the environment without causing economic hardship. And a new green economy can help that. But I think what's important to realize is that we can do better. You know, many of us do things to do better, but it's important in the midst of that to recognize that the world today lives with a great deal of pollution. Very few people have clean water. Our rivers and lakes and oceans are filled with plastics, including microplastics that have taken over the environment and can even be found on Mount Everest. Greenhouse gases are causing climate change. And the chemicals we dump in the earth, both those to take care of our lawns as well as uh, industrial spillage, 
are killing insects and small animals and the pollinators and throwing the ecosystems out of balance. This isn't a way forward for us. We need to take care of the earth and take care of the earth for ourselves. Because unless we do, we could end up much like Emily, laying in our graves and discovering that earth is too beautiful and we didn't realize it. It's easy for us to feel guilty about what's happening to the earth, but we need to recognize that guilt doesn't lead to change. When we feel guilty about something, we may change a little bit. We may make an attempt to make a little change, but it doesn't last. We go back to doing what we were doing before as soon as we're not feeling guilty. When it comes to real change, what motivates real change for us is when we understand that it's in our best interest, that it's good for us to change, and that it's good for the people around us. When there's real benefit, we change and we embrace change. The difficulty with changing the way we do things for the sake of the environment is that we don't often see that there's real benefit. And that's difficult because changing for the environment is a long-term process. It doesn't happen quickly. So we don't always see the benefits of that change. Now, yes, many of us have made certain changes. If you're like me, then you sort out your recyclables based on what your local government will take in the curbside recycling project. Or you'll use reusable bags and take those to the store. You know, I've driven a hybrid vehicle for the last 14 years. I'll probably have it another year. And then I'm going to get an all-electric car, and that will do something to help the environment. But even if all of us did all of these things and did them very well, it's not going to solve the problem we have with the environment today. What we can do on an individual level isn't sufficient to impact the environment to the degree the change is needed. You see, where the real issue comes with the environment are corporate and governmental policies. Corporations have a hard time looking at the environment because it doesn't fit into their framework. Corporate strategy is based on profits, quarterly profits, seeing if this quarter was more profitable than last quarter, and if this quarter was more profitable than the same quarter a year ago. So that's the measure for corporate success and corporate life. And with the environment, we're talking about decades. And many corporations don't know whether they're going to be in existence in decades. They may be bought and sold or take over or change or something. So it doesn't compute for them. Governments are similar. Their term may be longer, like an annual budget but they're responding primarily to the needs of the economy, which boil down to the needs of corporations. There isn't sufficient consideration of what is needed for the well-being of the planet. And that's really the area of concern that we need to look at for the environment. We have a particular window with which to look. Scientists tell us that between 2027 and 2042, we will have reached the point where the greenhouse gas level is such that we won't be able to return, that we won't be able to turn back the inevitable next extinction. So we have a very small window, and we're right near that window. People may debate the science, but debating the science is really like a dog chasing its tail. It's not going to get us anywhere. Instead, it's important for us to act. And the level of action that we need is advocacy with corporations and the government. You can do that by becoming active, by supporting organizations that work for change. In the video, Spirituality and Social Justice, I talked about the way spiritual practice 
enables us to become compassionate for ourselves and for others. First, because of spiritual practice, we're able to be more accepting of ourselves and our limitations, and feel compassion for the people we are. That compassion grows to others, to feel compassion for them and their situation. The category of others isn't just about people. The category of others is about all living things and the planet. As we grow in our spiritual practice, we become more aware, more sensitive to, more compassionate toward the needs of the earth. After all, the earth is not only in our home, it's the source of our life. It is because of the air and the food and everything that the earth provides for us that we have life. And when the earth is in balance, our lives can flourish. And so it's in our best interest to assure that the earth is healthy, that our water is clean so that we can have long life by breathing clean air. It's in our own good. Not only is it of practical importance, but it's also a moral issue. John Audubon, an environmentalist from the 19th century, the person for whom the Audubon Society, the birdwatching society, is named after. Audubon observed that we often think of the planet as having been given to us by our ancestors. Instead, we need to understand that the earth is something that we give to our children. That our life on earth and what we do to it is something that we leave for the future generations. This understanding is very consonant with the understanding of morality from the Iroquois Federation. The Iroquois Confederation were the Native American tribes that lived in the northeastern woodlands of the United States. They had a very simple ethical principle. The morality of my action is based on how it will impact those living in seven generations. My actions are good if they enhance life for people in the seven generations. I'm never going to know those people. Those people live 140 years after me, but what I do now will impact them. However, we're at the time where we don't have 140 years. As I mentioned already, scientists are telling us we have until 2027 and 2042 to make real change to protect the environment. The changes that we need are to limit greenhouse gases. They're to rid the world of plastics and clean up the mess we have left to learn to enhance life. And there are ways that we can do that that will also help grow the economy. Many economists have said that. So it's important for us to look practically to our future and to really look at what we want the future generations to have. Do we want our children and descendants to receive a world that is wonderful, that is clean and pure and vital, that will help them to live fully and to prosper. I think that's something to strive for. I think that's practical, and something that's good, and something that will benefit all life and is an act of compassion and a moral good. Thanks for being here today. Subscribe, like this video, click the bell, and leave me some comments. I really want to hear what you're thinking about this topic. Have a great day.